Right, so it's very late at night <clears throat> and we're going to get started. So section one, assembling the, the chassis rails. Section two, rear springs and what, what you get of the engine. I'm just going to assemble these, I'm not going to paint them yet. Um, I'll spray them when I'm sure what colour it is. Like I said, I'm going to do this in an RAF variant, which was just after the war. So the bodywork would be blue, but I've just read that the chassis was painted black. So I'm going to give it a day or two to try and find out exactly if that's true or not. Um, but in the meantime, I'll just get assembling these bits. So cut all the bits off for section one, uh, clean them all up. Let's see if it all slots together. So there's a note there to make sure that you get part D13 round the right way. So even I can't get that wrong. Uh, so line all the bits up. Get all in the right order. It's all going far too easy, so I've probably got something wrong. Probably an easier way of doing this that I haven't thought of because now I've got to line all these bits up. Yeah. I'll be fine. Just thinking, this is probably the most modern FX kit I've ever made. Normally, get round to buying and making them about 20 or 30 years after everyone else has. So, uh, so far, this is all going together rather nicely. It's just my cack hand in this getting in the way. But then, I'm used to that. Hmm, that's looking pretty good. I'll get the quick drying stuff on here. This stuff I love. How much less awful would all my have attempts when I was a little kid? <clears throat> How much neat they would have all turned out if this stuff had been around here. I mean, 
don't get me wrong, they'd still probably be quite awful, but not quite as awful as, as they were. Where's my tape gone? Yeah. So happens when you tidy up, you can't find things. doing this because I know that if I don't, as soon as I put it down, I'll nudge it and it'll all set in the wrong place. Because, you know, life's like that, man. Well, it's far too easy. This bit's bound not to go on now. Uh, that way round. Yeah, that's it. Crikey. Oh, well done, FX. You've made it so that even I can't get it wrong. So I can't even blame it on a substandard kit anymore. I have to blame it on my own lack of talent. Hmm, okay. Well, that was remarkably simple. Have I done it wrong? Must have done it wrong. Surely. No? Hmm, okay. This video is going to be a bit shorter than I thought it would. Uh, yeah, I might as well do section two then. Do these separate, the two rear springs, just so I don't get them mixed up. Because if I put that down, cut the other one off the frame, I'm going to mix them up. Because, you know, just because, because, just because. Something just needed to double check. On this side of the leaf spring, let's get it a bit closer. You just might be able to just see there's a little tiny bit sticking up, and I thought that might have just been where I cut it off the frame, but that is supposed to be there. The bit to sand down is on the other side. So I was just about to sand that off thinking it was. Uh, Surplus. Hmm. Right.
So it's pretty straightforward by the look of it. Uh, hmm, which way round does it go? Okay. Again, something to look for. <clears throat> I'm sure you'd spot this anyway. But there's a long pin on one side. It's there. And a small little bit sticking out of that side. So I see it's the, the longer ones that go into the into the chassis. Just to make sure I've got that around the right way. Beautiful fit. Oh, that's very satisfying. Hmm. Impressive, impressive. Well done, ethics. I'm going to say that a lot because uh, old kits. As I'm sure you know, it used to take hours and hours of sanding and filling and sanding and filling. But don't seem to need to do much of that now. Which is good because it's boring. Oh dear. It's lovely my poodle's under the table but every now and again he lets one go and it drifts up and it, oh. right so that seems to go into a little slot just there like that uh, yeah oh easy peasy Just to show on the frame, you can see that. So the little tiny pin sticks out just there on this, this side. So make sure you sand off that one, not that one. But I'm sure you'll work it out. Oops. Because <laughs> honestly, I'm no expert, so This isn't supposed to be a, a guide to how to do this kit, it's just how I'm doing it. And if, uh, if that's useful, brilliant. But many of you will be more experienced in the latest sort of techniques and things than I am. And uh, more practiced in it. I haven't done much of this for a long time. But when I was an horrible little sprog, I made hundreds of kits, possibly even thousands. It, was, it just took up a big part of my life. And uh, The um, part of the joy of this hobby, I think, is it's at least for some of us, it's therapy, and uh, well, that's got to give a well, and the nostalgia side of it as well. So, the idea of this channel is that all these 
subjects are things that have some relevance or meaning or something nostalgic. And um, for me, these three ambulances I seem to be building is simply because um, I was an ambulance man for a long, long time, 13 odd years, more than that, about 15, I think, in the end. Um, and my granddad, he was in the Royal Army Medical Corps in the First World War. Um, I never met him, he died in 1945, so that's before even I was born. Um, so yes, that's the vague excuse for buying three ambulance kits to make. Okay, that'll do for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow.